get three vampires in a flat, obviously there's going to be a lot of tension. Ooh, scary! Yeah, what do you in the shadows, Gary? Do you do uh, shadows? Yes. Gary? We do not want to know what you do in the shadows, Gav. <laughs> but yeah, amazing. So we're watching, that's what we're watching this week, uh, what we did in the shadows. Yes, absolutely. Um, and not the TV all... series, it's the film. Exactly, the original film that the TV series is then based on. We are talking to Eurovankel, who is from Filmsy, a free streaming platform where you can get lots and lots of good independent films. I think that's what they specialise in, the independent. Are they, uh, is Filmsy kind of like supporting us? Are we kind of, are they, are we now got a, no, they're not. No, they're not. no that didn't actually work out. But <laughs> we can, we we can say of, they're good without it being any kind of advertising thing because we're yeah, not getting yeah. anything out of this. Oh, At the end okay. of the day, from the point of view of advertising, it's free. Yeah. So, well, film is advertising that's free. That's like yeah, advertising yeah. air. This is my favorite film podcast. I'm Gav Smith. That's Gary Coleman. Hi. We are going to talk to Euro any moment now about this film. So I think that's probably the best idea. Should we just get straight into the interview, Gary? What you're Let's at? do it. Let's find okay. out what, what he does in the shadows. Viago was an 18th century dandy. Look, a ghost cap. Vladislav is a bit of a pervert. This is my torture chamber. Deacon's like the young bad boy of the group. I'm supposed to pay rent, but I don't. Hello, Euro. How's things? Hi, Gav. Uh, all good. Thank you for the invitation. We're good. Um, t- today, we're going to talk about uh, what we do in the shadows. Before we get into that, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, your relationship with film, I guess? Okay. So my relationship with film is that I'm actually looking after marketing activities at Filmsy, which is a free streaming service worldwide available. Yeah, and uh, that's the closest connection to the movies for me because it's yeah, my just... every, everyday business, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just checked out films. It does look awesome. It's really good. Just just trying to gather about it earlier on. It does look amazing. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Thank you. And You're free. Hard. And it's and free. free. It's totally yeah. free. We don't even ask yeah. for a credit card. We don't even ask for your email. We don't credit card. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's like no questions asked, right? So, so yeah, yeah, it's totally free. Yeah, wow, totally, awesome. totally free and, and lots of content on it as well, including this film. Including this, what we do in the shadows and yeah. plus 2,000 more titles. So yeah, yeah, you can choose whatever you want. Almost. Almost. Um, <laughs> almost. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. specialties are not there yet. Working on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's what we do in the shadows. That's, uh, that's the one I picked as, as my favorite movie. Because okay. obviously it is. Yeah. And... One of the reasons is that I I really like um, like absurd comedies, mm. or like absurd jokes. Yeah. Um, I don't know Monty Python's, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something I can watch all around every day. Yeah. So this one, what we do in the shadows, is very close to it, at least for me. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. Really making fun of itself, right? So that's yeah. that's fun. I hadn't thought that actually, but there are a lot of um, similarities to Monty Python type comedy in there I suppose the humor is very very like that yeah when I first heard about what we do in the shadows it was it was before before it came out and I remember seeing the posters for it I'm in London so I saw the posters of it on the on the on the tube and I just thought it was a horror movie and I just thought oh I love I love kind of all gothic horror movies I love vampire movies I thought, oh this looks like a fantastic movie and then I heard it was a comedy and just I, remember, I don't even remember the posters the posters are basically the, 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 the same image that you have on the front of the like the, the video thing whatever I thought this is this someone has made this movie for me. It's just like you know, gothic <laughs> horror, vampires, and it's yeah. a comedy, and it's got the guy from um, uh, Flight of the Concords in it. Yeah. It's just like wow, this is gonna be, and it was a brilliant film. I loved it. Yeah, brilliant it is. Um, can you give us a quick plot synopsis of it? Do you think, Euro? Sure. So it's a mockumentary, right? So yeah. it's as Gary mentioned, documentary together with horror, but it's also fictive one, right? So so it's all made up and um, <laughs> it's following, uh, I think, three or four vampires life in nowadays New Zealand. Yeah. And how they how they just fight through everyday stuff, how, how they solve the problems of being flatmates, how they try to you know, go shopping or go to the nightclubs, uh, yeah. how, how difficult it is for them to actually find a new blood right because they need to drink the blood so it's, yeah. it's not that it's not that easy no. 
maybe it was easier in the medieval times. But <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> but Possibly. These days, yeah, yeah, these days, <laughs> not that easy. So yeah, it's just following them. And when I, when, I, when I watched it for the first time, I thought there is no story, to be honest. Mm. But after rewatching it a couple of more times, uh, I found a story there. <laughs> and that's, that's the interesting part, because the more, I, the more times I see it, I, every time I'm able to find something new there. Yeah. Uh, so now, for me, the main plot is actually a lot about the love and about you know a vampire following through the whole earth mm. to see his uh, yeah. or to be together with his uh, loved one yeah and then there is another vampire i think it's uh, it's the vladislav yeah whose main nemesis is called the beast but beast. actually it's his lover <laughs> right it's his lover so so it's all connected all together with with these strings and it totally makes sense to to me the more i watch it that okay there is a yeah. Like, yeah, there, there's a deeper meaning in it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I found something similar in that the first time I saw it, I thought it was very funny and yeah. a real kind of uh, a love story to kind of like gothic horror. But it did feel like a series of sketches. And then when I watched, I watched it again last night um, and I, I, I enjoyed it even more. And, and as you were saying, there's, I think when you watch it the second time, you kind of get past the, the funniness and the silliness and the goofiness. Yeah. And there is a, there is a, you know, a well-told story behind it. Um, Riz, yeah. I, I I enjoyed it more than the second watching, and I, and I loved it the first time. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I like how it how you know small things clicked together later on in the story. Yeah. So yeah. so for example, uh, the vampires they need to be they need to be invited to yes. get inside somewhere, right? Mm. So that's why it's difficult for them to get to the nightclubs because no yeah, one no, wants to yeah. invite them. But then you see, and I don't know, can we can we? Uh, Mention some spoilers here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What, what, what are the, There's many spoilers the you like, yeah. Full of spoilers. spoilers. Okay, yeah. so everyone's going to die. No, not yeah. really. Uh, <laughs> <Go on. laughs> no, they can. They're undead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's difficult for them. Um, uh, but then we see that the main character, you know, the Viago, played by Taika, uh, oh. he entered the room or the flat of his lover, who is now 96 year old. Yeah. And how he can do it if he's not invited, right? Well, so in the very beginning, he was probably invited by her when they were still lovers together somewhere in Europe to come and visit her in New Zealand, right? right. So that's yeah. why he was able to get him into the flood. So there's a lot yeah. of small things that you can, you know, just see together and they will just click. I think you've thought about this way too much. Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if the scriptwriter saw that one, but yeah. <laughs> you probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Well, I'd maybe, probably. maybe, it, but but it fits. It fits. It fits. It does, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Fit. yeah. It's that thing of um, finding ways of defending plot holes within the film, and that is defending a plot hole in the film. So yeah. very well done on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Right, it it, it could be a plot hole. That's we all do it because I've done it with with my favorite film, and you see these plot holes, and you kind of go, actually, that's not a plot hole. It's because of, and you kind of work a way of working out how your film is still a great film, even though it's got loads of plot But Gav, holes. your favourite film was Highlander, which is it basically was. just a string <laughs> vest of plot holes <laughs> together with threads <laughs> and, strip, and scripts. But... <laughs> a plot hole. There, <laughs> a can't film. plug all of those holes. <laughs> um, that's kind of... You've, you, you've touched on why it's your favourite film, um, because of the, the zany comedy and that type of thing. When did you first see this? Was it at the cinema? Was it when it first came out? Or well, actually, I found it only uh, after starting at Filmsy. All right, okay. So it's just oh, a recent plug. Plug. <laughs> one. Yeah, it's very recent. Good uh, plug. I mean, I I like a lot of movies, uh, but since probably speaking about Czech and Slovak movies here wouldn't be exactly. <laughs> uh, and when you saw it on Filmsy, right. how much did it cost for you to watch it on Filmsy? <laughs> Well, they actually pay me to watch it, so oh, wow. I mean, I mean, that is a good service. Yeah, yeah. A good position here, uh, so I get paid to watch the movies. Will they pay um, anyone to watch their films, or is it just you? Well, there's a couple of colleagues. That... <laughs> How do I get into that? Well, it's it's very difficult to get there. Very right, difficult. <laughs> um, so you said he watched it three or four times. It, 
would would this be something you'd just put on of a, a sort of a rainy Sunday afternoon? Would you think this is? I know I want cheering up. I'll stick what we do in the shadows on. Well, um, thinking about this, well, actually not. I like to watch it when it's dark outside. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. And when there are kids, not not kids around, so because you know seeing all the blood. Yeah, yeah. Or everything. It's scary. It's scary. Really it is a scary, film. scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Hey, Peter's you, you, very you, scary. Peter, exactly. <laughs> Peter is very scary. Peter, oh my word! And yeah. also, also the one scene that uh, that Nick he's buying something in in a shop, and he's oh yes, and yes, then the yeah. shop the shopkeeper yeah, he's just making mm. face like Ksh! yeah, he makes that noise yeah yeah. 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 So, so yeah. that was really surprising again. So yeah, so rather not for a Sunday afternoon. No, no, no. Mm. not in front of the kids. Uh, yeah, um, it's. I mean, it, you, we mentioned before it's a, a mockumentary. Is mockumentary a type of comedy that you would enjoy watching normally, or is this your first foray into the world of mockumentaries? I'm trying to think about any more mockumentaries. Maybe I even that I watched. Maybe I didn't know that they were mockumentaries, right? Well, so... you got like some an- Anchorman <laughs> and things like that, or all that type of same type of thing. The Office yeah, on television, yeah. that type of thing. It's ah, all... the Office. Okay, of course. Okay, yeah. the Office. Yeah, the Office for sure. That's yeah. well. I went through all the series and all the episodes. So yeah, that's something that I liked a lot. That's cool. Mm, cool. So it and is also, kind of... and it's a little bit, a little bit crazy. But I also like you know some mockumentaries that they are trying to catch the big food or stuff like this, and it's. If you are completely exhausted after the day, yeah. you just know that they are not going to catch him, right? Because yeah. maybe it doesn't even exist. But you can just watch it and it's a little bit stupid and it's just relax, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So is that, that type of comedy is the best thing to watch when you're tired and late at night sort of thing, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the cast and crew then because that's what I like to try and do and then we'll get a little bit more into the film. So... Jermaine Clement, obviously from Flight of the Concords at this point, and then working with Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi, cock, always have problems with his name. Um, they wrote, directed this, put this together. They created this New Zealand documentary board that you see the nice little thing come up at the start. Um, what do you think of these two as? I mean, they're New, Z- New Zealand-born comics. They're they're quite much bigger in New Zealand than I guess they are anywhere else in the, the world at this point certainly when this film came out. I mean, Tyke has done a lot more since then. Um, what do you think of them as, as comics, as writers? Well, according to what I have seen so far, I really like them. I like their style of humour because yeah. uh, I also started to watch, of course, there is the Jojo Rabbit, right, by Taika. Yeah, yeah. Again, kind of like comedy and yeah. it's a little bit strange, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there is also a new series. It's called Our Flag Means Death. Right. It's directed by Taika and written by Taika. He's also, you know, acting there. Right. And it's the same, it's the same, let's say, sketches together that you don't really understand in the very beginning. But actually, there is a story and it's the Monty Python's like yeah. humor. Yeah. So that's something that I just, again, like binge watched. In, in one time, right. uh, the whole series. So I really, really like the humor, really a lot. I mean, yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Um, and what what about Jermaine then, coming from Flight of the Concords to this? Is he someone you'd heard of before seeing this, or are you not you know, shaking your head of like Flight of the Concords? Never heard of it. <laughs> they were actually a band, Flight of the Concords. They did a lot of really? music. I have, I have to then, check that. They did a, a comedy series um, as well. So it was very comedy music, I suppose. What about you, Gary? Did you, were you aware of that? Yeah, I remember them sort of... Um, I was actually just looking then just to remind myself when they when they were uh, performing, but sort of the early 2000s, they were very... Yeah. They were big in the UK. They were the winner Perrier Award. I remember being up in Edinburgh and they won the Perrier. Yeah. And I remember seeing them in like little bars in London, like the Albany playing, and they were hilarious. And they had a they had a big cult comedy following then in in um in you know in London or in the comedy circuit. They were they were kind of acknowledged as being the next big thing. Yeah. They had a series, on, uh, didn't they? Didn't they do a they did have a, a TV, TV series. series as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play like the Concord. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um so we've got this group of vampires living in a, a flat or a house in New Zealand. Um an odd mix because you've got um, 
Vladislav and then Vigo, uh, who are Jermaine and Tiger. And then you've got Deacon, who's supposedly the, the young, hip, cool one, although he's still quite old. Um, <laughs> and then Peter, who's a very Nosferatu-type vampire who lives in the cellar and has, I think he's the, the person who changed Deacon into a vampire, certainly. Um, and then the, the new vampire that comes along, which is Nick, who is very new to the whole world of vampiring. And I guess it's the story's a lot about Nick uh, rather than the rest of them, in my sort of opinion. Let's kind of go through these, these vampires then. Um, what do you think of the, the different ways that vampires are depicted, I suppose, through this, or going through some sort of Vladislav and Vigo and whatever else. What you, think you, see, you see, they, they, they did a good mix of different ages from yeah. where the vampires are coming. So mm. they, they create a lot of space for uh, humors and jokes, right? Yeah. Uh, because I think, uh, as you said, that Deacon, he's the youngest one yeah. from them. And he's from a Nazi era, yes. right? Right. So he was a Nazi vampire, which is not a good combination to live <laughs> yeah. in the world, right? So it's like, and then there is the Vladislav who is medieval, so yeah. torturing and stuff like this, and Viago, who is kind of, I don't know, a nobleman a little bit, yeah. as, I, as I understand it. Yeah. So I think that creates a lot of tension in the in the flat and in the relationship, a lot of dynamics. So yeah. so the mix is actually, it was very smart to to mix it like this together. Yeah, it's very clever. And also, it's, it, cause it, there's a lot of parody of, of, of the genre, of the, of the vampire movies. So they've kind of ticked all the boxes of Lost yeah. Boys, Interview yeah. the Vampire, Nosferatu, yeah. Dracula. You know, they're all ticked, aren't they? They've all got their own version of Dracula, I suppose. Very clever. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very well done. I, I, I think um, Peter, being the Nosferatu type vampire in the, the cellar, is just brilliantly done. He's not used the enough. The fact he's called Peter. The fact he's called Peter. It's like Trevor yeah. or something. He's a horrific yeah. vampire, Peter. Well, it is, it is um, spelled P-E-T-Y-R. So yeah. it's, it's not just Peter. Oh, <laughs> Peter. It sounds like Peter. It sounds like Peter, yeah. yeah. But he's, he's brilliant. I like him. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite of the vampires? Well, they're definitely Viago. Be- <laughs> yeah. I just like his... I, I, like a lot his acting uh, his yeah. pronunciation you know it's, it's a little bit mm-hmm. kind of strange and even yeah. Vladislav you know his English is kind of that you can feel and see that he's not the native speaker there yes mm. or yeah. on purpose of course yeah so but I really like Viago because he's trying to you know when they are for example talking about the errands in the house he's trying to make the everyday life, you know, tidy up, everything yeah. should be nice, everything should be mm. good, organized. Yeah. And yeah. now his couch is red because, yes. you know, with all in blood, <laughs> yeah. which wasn't before, but yeah, now it's red. So, yeah. so yeah, I just, I just like his acting. And you yeah. can, you can see also when the, when they are the opening scenes and they are kind of introducing all, all yeah. the, all, all the other vampires, it's it's just very funny how, how he does it and he's very nice to them kind of like yeah. looking after them you know it's uh... yeah he's like it's like the house mom as he, he, run, he runs yeah, the exactly. house he looks after them exactly yeah. exactly yeah. he's looking after all of them yeah because it i mean it starts with this this concept that it it is a, a documentary that's really happening you get all these titles that come up at the start that say you know we're looking at the lives of these vampires before the great I can't remember what it's called now, the supernatural um, conference that's going to be happening very soon mm. and how all the, the cast, uh, everyone that's filming has been given a crucifix and been promised that they're not going to be attacked by the, the vampires and all this type of thing. And then, of course, you, you start with the raising from the bed of um, Viago um, and him checking the curtains. I, I think that's that's brilliant the way we bring in <laughs> on him and sort of, Yes, it's six o'clock. I'll just check and see if there's any sun outside and flicks through the curtains. Um, let's kind of go through the film a little bit. I mean, it's it's only an 80-minute film, so Gary will be really happy. You like a short film, don't you, Gary? I, I, yeah, and anyone who listens to this knows any film over 90 <laughs> minutes, I'm just not going to... I'm going to be angry about watching. So, yeah. Especially comedy. Oh, Comedies have I to totally, be... I totally feel you. I get the same impression. Now, nowadays, the movies are too long. Jeez. Way too long. Way too long. 90 yes. minutes. Brevity is levity. 
Yeah. Exactly. This is short than that. It's 80, 82 minutes, I think it is. It's not long at all. That's Brilliant. Um, so if you didn't have the whole 82 minutes to watch the film, which I can't see why anyone wouldn't have 82 minutes to watch a film, um, if you're switching it on, where would you have to come in? Where would you be the first sort of scene you'd have to come into to see to kind of get a gist of what this film's about? Okay, if someone is uh, going to watch the movie for the first time based on these topics, yeah, I would tell him to go one minute before the very end of the titles. Right, okay. Like, of the very, very end of, of the movie, one minute. Mm-hmm. That's enough. <laughs> he, will, he will just see what is there. <laughs> and if you have those eight, two minutes, or kind of, uh, I would still go with the very opening, with the very beginning, when, yeah. he's, when there's the introduction, when there is the flat meeting, when they are talking about not having the dishes done for five years. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just all the absurd stuff, you know, that the deacon is sitting there and knitting. It's like, Come on, why is he knitting? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and it, it's, so, it's so cool, at least for me. So, yeah, yeah I would go for the, for the first 10 minutes when they just set up the world, set up yeah. the relationships. And it tells a lot about that. Yeah, you just want to watch more then. Yeah. Yeah, it just, that just kind of brings you into it, doesn't it? It brings you into the world and tells you what, what exactly. we're dealing with here. Um, and that, that, that sort of house meeting is about the well, three of the vampires, the three sort of main vampires and how they've got this interaction. And there's a lovely bit about how Peter won't be turned up and the fact, well, he's 4,000 year, year old, we don't want him around anyway. Mm-hmm. Um but well, then we get introduced to Nick. So what do you think of the extra dynamic that Nick brings in as this brand new, just changed vampire? Well, honestly, when I when I firstly saw it and there was a Nick there, I was feeling like he shouldn't be there. All right, okay. But, you know, I was just like, ah, I just want to watch how these three vampires are going through everyday life and you know, see all the situations which can be kind of like flying circus, right? Of different yeah. situations. Uh, but now if I rethink it and rewatch it, uh, it totally makes sense, right? Because <laughs> the story yeah. must evolve somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so what was the question actually? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel that Nick sort of fits into the dynamic as this sort of uh, new yeah. vampire just being changed vampire? Yeah, he, he moved it uh, a lot because now he's telling everyone that he's a vampire and it's completely yeah. situation they need to cope with. Yeah. So I think he, he really put the dynamics there that yeah. you know, yeah. the story thought, starts I, moving, right? I suppose I suppose Nick is the only one that doesn't kind of follow a cinema vampire trope. You know, he's not he's not the Lost Boys, he's not interview. Yeah. He's us, isn't he? He's just one of us who's become the vampire and yeah. he's a bit of a fool, you know, a bit of a... Uh, uh, yeah, just a bl- he's just a geezer, some bloke who's now become a vampire. And of course, he does everything wrong. He's telling everybody he's a vampire, and yeah, he's just acting like some guy would do. So, yeah. uh, it's our entry into their world of vamp- vampires. I suppose he, he's doing what we would have done if if I turned into a vampire. I'd probably oh tell everybody, yeah, I'm a vampire. Yeah, oh my God. watch yeah, I can fly. No, I can, hey. I can fly. Tell everybody yeah. I can fly. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> great. And then, <laughs> and then get Peter killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That wasn't good for Peter. Um, but but I, I mean, they, they use the character very nicely to show the negative side of the being a vampire, right? Mm. Because he's complaining a lot. He's telling, like, you know, I now cannot even eat French fries. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, vomiting That's for a great scene. Five minutes, right? That's a great scene, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, th- I think they, they used him as an opposition to, to show that, okay, it's, it's not all that great. Yeah. And even when he's when he's firstly visiting their house as a vampire, when he's going to when he's trying to fly through the window, yeah. <laughs> he's like really not sure how to do it. And... Yeah, rubbish vampire. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, just trying to fly all the way everywhere. Yeah, can't get. I know, I the, 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 I know there's also the, the bit of tragedy between him and is it Steve, the the human guy, Stu. Stu, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can see that this, he still wants to just be. He, Human, he's definitely yes. lost some humanity. He wants to yeah. be friends with you, yeah. Um, so again, it brings the tragedy of the, of the, of the sort of the curse of being a vampire into it. Yeah, because um, you have that that great scene where he's he's explaining to the the camera who Stu is, and he goes, "You can't hear any of this," and just <laughs> hypnotizes him into not hearing it, so he can say a thing that you can hear again. <laughs> it's, it's it's brilliantly done. 
Because yeah. they, they bring that whole thing that vampires can hypnotize people, but they just have to say things in so much, and they use it quite a lot. There's a, yeah. a scene I'm sure we'll get on it later that Taika Waititi teaches that's really good. Ich bin ein Vampir. Which means, I am a vampire. I was born in 1795. The same year that some other really important things were happening in Europe. The French Revolution, the invention of long pants. Talking about Nick and Nick's inability to be a, a good vampire. And then his friend Stu. So Stu is his human friend who he kind of brings into the group. And that certainly um, Deacon prefers Stu to Nick. Mm. I think Deacon would be quite happy if Stu was actually a, a vampire with them, but they invite him in to, to live in the group, really. Um, not really want Nick there, but Stu gets invited to live with them, which creates a, a whole different set of tensions. Um, what do you think of, of Stu in this as this human that's kind of living with vampires and being told he's living with vampires, but he's perfectly safe? I'm not sure he very... He feels very safe to be there. Oh, <laughs> <me> out, no. <laughs> <laughs> he looks very tensed all the time, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he knows computers. That's a big plus. Mm. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. know. He, 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 yeah, he, he looks like just, you know, to be a, to be a side, side uh, actor there or someone, you know, yeah. just mm. happened to be there. Uh, but actually, he's quite a quite a crucial for the story, and that's you are very right. Yeah, yeah. Never, never it's amazing because because he is just kind of in shot a lot. It doesn't say an awful lot, but he is very crucial to the whole plot yeah. and everything that goes on. I suppose. Um, I haven't mentioned uh, Jackie. Um, Jackie is uh, Deacon's. I don't know woman that does things for him. He's promised uh, that eventually he will turn her into a vampire and give her everlasting life. Um, but he basically just uses her at the moment to get him virgins, effectively. That's what he wants, young virgins, because that's what vampires like. What's what's the line that he comes up with? Because it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> well, we, we don't know why we are doing it. It's just it's cool. cool. What is it? It's... Um, if you were going to eat a sandwich, you'd want to know that someone hadn't already eaten that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, someone Whoa. hadn't already fucked that sandwich. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you think of this relationship with, with Jackie and, and her trying well, to get I, things from? I felt very sorry for her during the whole movie. <laughs> and it was, it was really funny when she then became uh, the vampire. Yeah. And her husband was kind of her slave, or she was she was his his master. Yeah. So I really like liked how how she was now enjoying it at the very end, and then she was in charge, and he was like, yeah. "Yes, you are my husband, but remember, I'm your master." So yeah. it, it's a great plot. So I was feeling sorry for her all the time, to be honest, because she had high hopes, and well, uh, Deacon was just promising, right? He wasn't yeah. really making sure that the promises will be kept. And in fact, when Viago has a call with his old, it's not a servant, let's it's say. It's a servant, mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a servant. So you can see that the vampires really don't care that much about the promises they give. Yeah, because he said the same thing. You were, you were going to make me a, a vampire and you never did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. and he was like 90-something already. Yeah. <laughs> and angry that he's not a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Understandably, uh, this is yeah. this is the relationship a little bit. So Alan Partridge and Lynn, do you know the, his uh, his yes. PA, you know, yes. Alan Partridge, where she's like this dog's body constantly put down. Yeah, um, but way more kind of sensible than he is, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, there is there's a there's a big part of that, I suppose. Yeah, I wonder if they if they stole it from Partridge. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, Let's just go back to the, the film. So there's, there's obviously lots of characters going on, lots of stuff. We'd said that that opening scene where you kind of introduced them all and have that, the meetings kind of very important. Um, trying to sort of flick through what, what would be an ex sort of great scene that you, you need to have seen? Or... Um, okay, so 
great scene that we, you know, my, one of my colleagues for fun, he even redone the scene. So mm-hmm. he, he get the same dress and he was trying to act the same. And it's the erotic dance that he <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, erotic? Is that the right is word? Erotic? Erotic? <laughs> they, they call it they call it erotic call dance it. for his friends. And he was just in the mood and they were in the mood or or some, something like that, how how they how they describe it there. Yeah. So they call it erotic dance. They do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well actually when we were introducing this movie on Filmsy platform, so that was the idea that one of our colleagues, <laughs> male colleague, will will recreate this dance. <laughs> and we will just use it, you know, as a teaser for the movie itself. That, <laughs> that's something Brilliant. that you can see in much better quality than in the movie. Uh, uh, well, we didn't, we didn't use it, but just for fun, he recorded the the dance. Uh, and, and is that is that available anywhere? Can we can we get a hold of that? <laughs> I'm not sure he would he would be happy about it. <laughs> so it was just just a bit bullying uh, in the workplace. But... Uh, well, he volunteered a little bit, uh, but uh, he was yeah. not forced. What I love is when they cut from the dance, which is funny, but then they cut to the reaction of Vlad and the yeah. other guy just sitting these two blokes. What are we watching? It's yeah. So beautiful. And it's almost like, I don't know whether Jermaine's about a laugh, whether they cut away just the, it looks as if the character playing Vlad is trying yeah. to take it really seriously. It looks as if he's about a laugh and then they kind of cut away. Yeah. So maybe he was. I, I think he probably was. Yeah, um, I might. But I like the- I like the whole setup of the scene because he's you know drinking blood from a yeah. from a night cup. Mm. It looks like a picnic, you know. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> so it's it's all, all fun. Yeah, looks like they had some really wild parties just sitting around like that <laughs> with their their old gramophone on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Until Nick comes in, and does his scratching, which is quite good. Introduces yeah. being a DJ to them. Um. Where would we go next? Where would be the next sort of big scene, best scenes? Uh, best scenes, uh, because I really like small scenes that just show, you know, some kind of the life yeah. of the vampires. So I really like the scene when Stewie and Viago, they are fighting karate or yeah. something, and Viago just <laughs> fly through the room. It's like two or three seconds only, yeah. but, but I like this. Or when there is a Vlad, Vladislav is vacuum cleaning and he's hovering on the on the vacuum cleaner. Mm, yeah, you know, I mean, on there. And a very nice scene that I like is when they are trying to catch Nick when he's there for the for the visit for the first time. Yeah, <sighs> terrifying, um, yeah. really scary. Yeah, the yeah. house. Yeah, that one, yeah. that one is scary. But once he's already a vampire, I guess. They are fighting and they are running on the ceiling. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, the walls yeah. and things. Exactly. Yeah. And, and Deacon and I, Deacon is saying, saying to him like, like, get up and stand on the ceiling like a man. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this um, small, like everyday vampire stuff. Yeah, is there. That's that's yeah. what I what I really like there. Yeah, like yeah, those are the best scenes for me. Yeah. Well, you, Gary, have you got any sort of favourite scenes? That um, you... yeah, I mean, it's just really well done. I, what I do like is I like that the, the when they when they bring in a sense when they take it seriously as a horror movie, they're clearly the, yeah. the fans of horror. And yeah. So there's little, there's loads of little bits where they kind of cut away to like these black and white woodcuts, these old woodcuts or these old images of vampires from like other media. Yeah. Um, and it really does make you like feel like you're watching a small kind of creepy documentary about vampires. I, I love that. And then the horror bits as well. We mentioned some of the jump scares and things. Yeah. Are really well done. There are moments that really are horrific. Peter, anything with Peter in it is horrific. <laughs> um, uh, yes. I, I like the fact that they've, they've, they've treated the horror ser- seriously. They, they clearly love horror movies. Yeah. They, they, they've, they, you know, they, and so fans of horror movies will enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and then they're just so funny. They just have taken the world seriously. What if vampires, it's like, Oh, what was this? What was the sitcom? Um, the young ones. Remember this? The young yes. ones. Yeah. That sort of student flat chair. Yeah, yeah. That, but they're all vampires, and yeah. they've just taken that world really seriously. So it was, yeah. it's such a brilliant film. It's it really is. It's really like brilliant. student life for vampires. Yeah. 
And also how rubbish it is. Like, the, like that dance scene, the, ero- the erotic, let's call it an erotic dance. It's not very erotic. It's like the least erotic dance it is. <laughs> and then we just cut to these guys sitting there drinking blood, looking yeah. at it. It's like, that's just, oh my gosh, when, I, when you're a student, there's so much of that as in, oh, hey, let's have a good time, guys. It's like, oh my God, it's so rubbish. Just sitting there with a the record on, yeah. Sitting there drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watching somebody dance. You go, oh God, yeah. I mean, there are some, there's some, Great little set piece, and I, I love the bit with um, Viago when he's got his his female victim, and he's saying he likes to give them a good time, and he's playing her music and asking about how she's going to do with her life, and as he's doing it, he's setting up bits of paper around her body to make sure they just get blood everywhere. <laughs> going to keep the place clean. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. The reality of being a vampire rather than the yeah. romance of so yeah, yeah, so well done. But he's very attentive, you know. It's their last moments, so it should be nice. <laughs> Absolutely. He says that, doesn't he? He says, no, I, th- I think she, you know, it was nice. I think she had a good time. Because <laughs> yeah. he hits an artery. Yeah. When, when they hit the streets for the first time, um, there is a small scene that they met two young vampires, two girls, actually. Mm, yes. And they ask them, like, it's like who are you going to meet? And they answer, like, some pedophile they're like cool right and yeah, then yeah, the yeah, next yeah. scene you see that they are actually killing the man and yeah sucking the blood out of him so it's like yeah. oh man so but it gets really horrific it's really yeah. scary scene isn't it when they're yes. kind of just yeah. throttling him and dragging him into the dark it's exactly. oh really creepy yeah there's some there's some really well observed bits like that um mm. I, I think the whole thing with the the werewolves when they meet up with the werewolves <laughs> as well is just because there's obviously tension between vampires and werewolves that is unseen, but I think they do say, you know, that there's some werewolves come over, that there's going to be some trouble here, and they can't talk to the cameras. Yeah. The werewolves, not werewolves. It's the MFF Awards. Standard performance. Who's your standard performance? I think you said already, but... For me, yeah, it's, it was Taika Waititi, that's a Viago. Yes. Yeah. I think he's, he believes the role, he's really playing it, you know. He doesn't even have to, I have a feeling that he doesn't even have to act, right? Because it's yeah. very natural to him. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's... that's Almost about, I, I'd agree with that one. I think uh, Tyker's really brilliant in this. I think he just, um, he sells the whole idea of being this yep. foppish vampire <laughs> type thing. He's very um, interview with a vampire style, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Gary, do you agree with that one? Oh, it's so hard. I mean, they're all, it is, it, I think it is an ensemble for the, for the, yeah. the main vampires and they all interact so well together. Um, I kind of liked, I kind of liked um, Jermaine's Vlad. Yeah. I, I quite liked, I'd like the idea that they were cool. They were still kind of cool and Vlad is <laughs> like sort of dark, <laughs> brooding, yeah. menacing, proper sort of Dracula kind of cool. Yeah. I, I thought he had some really funny lines. Yeah. And then, um, but I'm going to... Jonathan Brew, who played Deacon, I, I didn't know who he was. I, do you know, the first time I saw the film, I kind of thought he was the other guy from Flight of the Concords, the short little guy. I did um, as well, yeah. But it's not I just assumed it. it was him. No. And then when I watched it again last night, I was like, oh, it's not him at all. It's a different actor no. altogether. Yeah. I thought he was really good, really, really good at playing that... Um, uh, it's quite an un- 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 understated performance where he's just... Like trying to be cool, you know, you know, cool. And it's just, a, I don't know, it's just the lines are very conversationally funny. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, he, he was really good. And his relationship to, he hates Nick, that was kind of funny. And as yes. you mentioned, but then he oddly really likes Stu, just the little things yeah. which kind of, you know, they're not sort of, there's no massive focus on them, but they're just always playing along in the background and just, they're just always funny, his, his humanity, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, Jonathan. Is the okay, part. that's fine. You can do that. You're allowed. Oh, can I do that? Can yeah, you're allowed. You can disagree with me. It's okay. I usually say about four or five. <laughs> you <laughs> do. Really gonna make any <laughs> I, usually, I usually mention everybody in the cast. I go, oh, I like all yeah. of them. They're brilliant. All great. Everyone was great. Well done. Um, favorite scene then, Euro. Wow. Favorite scene. Now oh, there's so many of them. Mm. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> it's so difficult because yeah, like, yeah, it is like a series of sketches, the... as we said. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. But I will get the the one when they are dressing up for the masquerade. Yes. Viago came as a as a blade. You know, as a vampire. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, it's joke on joke, you know, joke. So yeah. yeah, that's that's the one that I I really like. Yeah, appreciate it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary, favorite scene? Um, the, well, I'm not sure if my favorite scene because they're just all so funny. Yeah. But the one that I, the one that kind of sh- shocked me is you already mentioned it is kind of sort of two thirds of the way through. It's clearly quite a low budgetish film, but it's done really well. Yeah. And then there's a bit where in, in, in a supermarket where Nick, who is the most human of all the vampires. He just, some guy in, in a shop goes, oh, I am a vampire as well. And clearly not. He's not a vampire. He goes, what can you do? And Nick goes, I can do this. And he just suddenly transforms into like this bat-faced creature. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's where 90% of the film's budget went on. That yeah. special effect. <laughs> but it really is, a, I, I jump when you say, oh my God, you know, it's so yeah. well done. It's it so scary. Um, yeah. And it just pull you back into filming. Go, oh, crikey, anything could happen. These are vampires. They could do whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that was money well spent on that on that shot. Absolutely, that I'm, I'm going to go for the um, the fight scene between Nick and Deacon, mm. which again again, again is yeah, somewhere where the rest of the budget went. Yes. Um, yes. Being able to be in a, a room where they can spin it round and keep the camera yes. in one place, so they can go on the roof and things like that. Yeah. Um, really well done, and the fact that it's broken up then at the end by the police turning up because of the noises is um, is, is classic. Um, Favorite line or one liner? Ooh, um, thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Uh, it's just a script full of one-liners, isn't it? Oh, it, it? is. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. after another. Yeah. yeah. But there is ones when they are going out to the city and they are going to hunt new blood. Yeah. And I think Deacon says, like, we are the bait, but we are also the trap. Mm. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool line. That's that's it cool. Yeah, it, it can be it's even good. you know by Arnold Schwarzenegger in some. <laughs> <laughs> it still fits. It still fits there. Yeah, it would. It would work in all places. All those places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, Gary. Um, but I, I was kind of looking through the lines trying to find a like a one liner, but a lot of it is just conversational. It's just it is, that, yeah. It's it's just flat. It's just students sharing a flat. Yeah. And they're just making. They're just having conversations that students would have. But it's just sort of juxtaposed, juxtaposed against the ridiculousness of them being these undead vampires. But there is a line, there is a line which which I laughed out loud at, and it does sound like yeah. a joke. Where through so the whole thing, they've set up this character called the Beast, yeah. and they keep showing this like old woodcut, this old sort of sixteenth century yeah, yeah, woodcut yeah. of this beast, this creature with a penis coming out the middle of it. Yeah, and then it's set up. You're going to meet the Beast. You're going to uh, Vlad, who's absolutely terrifying, is terrified of this creature. So how scary is it going to be? And there's a bit where he goes, the, the, the master ball at the end, and the, the beast is revealed. He goes, yes, yeah, this is the creature, the beast. Uh, or she prefers to be called Pauline. And he just cuts <laughs> it. It's just his girlfriend. Just, yeah. The whole thing was, she isn't the beast at all. She's a very attractive young woman. And, yeah. um, that's, just, that's as close as they get to a gag, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a, That's an ongoing one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the beast. Yeah. Um, I quite like the, uh, it's Vladislav sitting on the, the internet and he's saying just leave me i do my dark bidding on the internet <laughs> and vigo goes what are you bidding on I'm bidding on a table <laughs> <laughs> that's a good gag yeah yeah, yeah. nice Brilliant. gag uh, but there is also a good one like can you show us a video of sunrise <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes well that's good that's good they're just looking at it yeah <laughs> yeah oh, well. beautiful um i was going to do best cameo but I don't know. Are, are there any cameos in this? It's, well, we said Steve. Can we go for Steve? Like Can we go for Steve? Steve? Right? Stu. Steve, Stu. The unknown person. Just... This, this guy that appeared. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd kind of sure gone. Every, every person is playing itself. Yeah. yeah. Unless it is a vampire, because now yeah. I'm checking. Like... Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd thought um, uh, Reese Barbie, who plays Anton, but because he's not. Jackie is Jackie, for example. Yeah. yeah Jackie's Jackie. Jackie yeah. Yeah, and Stu, Stu. Yeah. There's a bit where they cut to when when, when we first meet Deacon, <laughs> and he says, you know, and I was a, a Nazi, you know, so hey, no one likes, and I was a vampire, so hey. And there's a bit where they cut to Nazi vampires, and I'm just, is that is that a clip? Is that a clip from an actual film? Do do we do we know? Uh, or they look a bit like the vampires from um, uh, oh werewolves and American Werewolf in London. They look like the Nazi. Oh, they do bit, yeah, don't they? Yeah. But I don't um, know whether. The, I honestly don't know. I know on the... Um, or had they just made it for the film? I don't know. I know on the credits it does say Adolf Hitler as himself because he's in a bit of the old footage. <laughs> I don't right. know if that can class as a cameo or not. Though. There you go. There you go. <laughs> this cameo, Adolf Hitler. Again. <laughs> yeah. Always with the Adolf. 
Well, Stu is Stu. <laughs> Stu is played by Stu. Yeah, yeah. Stu is by Stu. Yeah. So. Jackie's well, played yeah. by Jackie as well. So exactly, like all the humans actually are played by their names. No? The yeah. Stu thing. I just I just read that they when they did Stu because Stu's not a comedian. He's not an actor. I think he's just one of their friends who wanted yeah. to play one of their friends. So they didn't tell him that he had a big part in the film. They just said, "Oh, you can just come on and do this little thing. You're not even in shock. You just be there." So for most of the film, it wasn't until the guy Stu watched the movie. And, Oh my gosh, I'm in this whole film. I'm actually one of the main characters. <laughs> if they told him he would have tried to act. And, uh, so he is just behaving as if he's off camera, you know, a lot yeah. of the time. He doesn't realize the camera's on him. He's just there. He's just there, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So maybe he's the best camera. If you were going to recast this, so you, you're oh, yeah. able to remake what we do in the shadows, and you've got the whole of Hollywood to choose from for all of your characters. Who would you cast as, let's just go with the main four. So let's do, just go with Vladislav and Vigo and Peter and Deacon and Nick. That's five. I can't count. Openly, you know, there is a series, What We Do in the Shadows. Like, there is, mm. yes. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. I started to watch it and I was not able to finish it because right. mm. there are different actors and it's just, it just wasn't that. Right? Mm. So Yeah. Although Matt Berry is very, very good. In yeah, well, what is the Vladislav character? He doesn't play Vladislav, but he is very, very good. Yeah, yeah but um, I mean, for me, it was like exactly like with with uh, different actors, just wasn't working the way as, right. as it is in the original. So I have no idea about recasting okay, it at all. <laughs> you didn't. You wouldn't recast it. Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't you recast. I, I was even not it. able to watch it when there was kind of yeah, I, recasting, yeah. I, I, right? So yeah, I, I agree. It's usually me. It's usually me when we do the films. Going, oh yeah, the film was okay, but I would like to recast. <laughs> it. Me going, he was alright, but I would change him for him. Usually, on, on this one, on this one, I think they got the casting. And it, yeah, it, 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 you know, it wasn't so much they cast characters. I, I think the characters were. Cr- they were created by the actors, weren't the actors? Were I think so, yeah. They were all created, them, you know, they create the characters themselves. Yeah. And, and they can't be bad, really. I think they are brilliantly, they're just the performance is brilliant. Yeah. And that's how they achieve that sort of nuanced um, stuff that goes on with, you know, Deacon sort of things. Because I guess it's, it's, it's them being them to an extent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we can't recast this one. It's, it's unrecastable. No, perfectly cast. That's well what done. we're going to say. And the, when okay. they tried to recast it for TV series, it, it didn't really work. Look, although, opinion. if they're looking for, because Peter died in the last one, I do yeah. look a bit like Nosferatu. So they're looking for another Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I don't, need, don't need makeup or anything. It's just, I just need to, <laughs> just, just don't give us a coffee first thing in the morning. And I'm <laughs> You've got to beat William Defoe for that one, though, because apparently he's going to be Nosferatu in the remake. Of Nosferatu? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'd be, well, Willem Dafoe's brilliant and everything, isn't yeah. it? There you go. So, uh, there you go. We could recast Peter as, uh, with William Dafoe. That's, that's how it... Yes. <laughs> no, Only one. <laughs> or Gary. Gary. Or Gary. Well. Yeah, but Gary must be aware of the fatal sunlight accidents. Yeah. That's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You'll get burned up. Um, talking of the series, did you uh, see any of Wellington Paranormal? At all? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Because that's the that's the the spin off with the two police officers that we have, Officer Minogue mm-hmm. and his partner, who come in. Um, that's that's brilliant. That's so well done because it just goes through lots of other. Obviously, Wellington is full of the supernatural, so as well as werewolves and vampires, there's also some other stuff. It's kind of like a a spoof X Files. It's, it's right, brilliant. Really well worth watching if anyone hasn't brilliant. seen it. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I check it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. If it's check the one same out. kind of humor, uh... it's it, yeah, exactly the same type of thing. Okay. Um, Perfect. And it's Perfect. just those two police the, officers. Do the main around. cast appear? Do the main cast do cameos in that? Not in any that I've seen so far. No. But the 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 two police officers are the same police officers, and they just go around solving supernatural cases in Wellington, which appears to be a place New Zealand that is full of. The supernatural, which is but even that in Wellington is a brilliant. The fact that the whole yeah. film takes place in Wellington, just in Wellington, yeah, just fantastic. It's a little <laughs> like sort of suburban town in New Zealand, awesome. Yeah, um, I think we've kind of covered the film quite well. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention about the film? Any favorite, any scenes we've missed? Anything that you think? Oh, I wish I mentioned that. I talked about that particular scene. No, that would mean that we need to 
talk through the whole movie again from the oh, very let's beginning. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's just do that. Yeah. Come on. Make it a two movie. hour podcast about an 80 minute film. Let me get you, just need to get a coffee first. <laughs> <laughs> or some blood. <laughs> some blood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, no, not, not from my side, no. but I really yeah, watch it a couple of times and there's every time something new so that's that's perfect um werewolves let's talk about the werewolves then because i must admit i like the werewolf scene and what do we think about the the, were, the werewolves we did mention that earlier that there's this wonderful scene with the werewolves that the vampires obviously don't like them um we have these this gang of werewolves that is led by reese barbie who has been in all sorts of stuff i mean he's i've seen him in so many things he's never a, a major player or anything but he's a, a big actor he's done a lot of stuff uh, who plays Anton? He's the lead werewolf. What isn't do you think Reece, of the, the it werewolf? Reece Darby? It's Reese Darby, isn't it? I thought it was Barbie. No, Reese Darby. I spelled it wrong on my um, notes. Are you saying it wrong? I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> you could have spelled it right. You're just reading it wrong. I'm know. reading it. I'm dyslexic, Gary. It's okay. <laughs> it's difficult for me sometimes. <laughs> Reese Darby. Sorry. Reese Darby. I, I apologize to Reese if he's listening. Um, we'd love for you to come on the show, Reese. So I'm, I'm very sorry <laughs> for getting your name wrong. Um, what do you think about the werewolves and the interaction between the werewolves and the vampires and which actually leads to the end of the film I suppose and our final attack of the werewolves and the sequel the maybe <gasps> the sequel uh, that's announced. the sequel is announced for a couple of years already I guess. Yeah. so they are not really working on it no <laughs> probably oh, well, sure. I think the TV series took over from that didn't it so they kind of didn't go with it I like the werewolves myself. I like the um, the whole where werewolves not swearwolves when they're trying to get they're getting angry and tying themselves to trees and things. Yeah, I like how how they are organized as a therapy group. Right? Yes, <laughs> they, they have this like count to ten, human again. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To calm to calm down, or yeah. exactly we're not yeah. we're werewolves, not swearwolves. So, so I like it how how they just pick it. As, really, it's a pack, right? So how they pack it as a, as a therapy group, and they are just trying not to be werewolves, right? Yeah. All the yeah. They're trying to be nice. And then when you see them, actually, I think they did a good job uh, when really showing the werewolves themselves yeah. once they're transformed, mm. because they looked really scary. I mean, they were high, they were fury, they were, yeah, yeah. you know, really scary, scary creatures, right? Yeah. And yeah. even though you have a feeling like it's some kind of low cost movie, that that part, that scenes with them were actually kind of like, okay, they put a lot of effort there, right? Yeah. I think that's it. The the, um, the special effects budget went on the, the bat face, yeah. the turning of the room when they were having the flying attack, and then the werewolves at the end. Yeah. Mm. So that's definitely where the budget the, went. The, um, the vampires and they sort of taking the mickey out of the werewolves being like dogs or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then they kind of get, they're all kind of like, no, no, we're not, we're not, we're not. But then they are a little bit like, um, <laughs> you, you sniff each other's groins all the time. We don't sniff each other's groins, well, just when we meet. You know, this is <laughs> except, you know, this little fleas as well. Yeah, we, are, we just want a little bit of fleas. You know. <laughs> they're just really crap a little bit. <laughs> they're crap are. werewolves. But and, they're and, really and crap think, vampires, and think, so. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think Deacon, he was, he was kind of like throwing uh, a fictive stick. And one of mm. the vampires, they, they tries to run for it, and the other yeah. one, like, no, it's not real, don't run, it's not real, come back. You know? So, so it was yeah. with the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Vampire is good. And they, of course, attack um, Stu. Uh, so when we, we finish the film, Stu is now a, a werewolf. Mm. Um, and the werewolves and vampires all make friends at the end, which is quite nice. Pals at the end. Yeah. Oh. yeah, but it's because Nick and Stu, you know, they are the, he's the best mate, he's the these yeah. guys together so yeah. now yeah now they are friends even though they are werewolves and vampires so i think that the loop was closed you know in a very yeah. nice way it's definitely a better ending than twilight they got that you know yeah. <laughs> that was, they could have done all of twilight and just the did the you film. did you watch all the way through to the end of the credits though i did because mm. at, at the very end, Deacon pops Deacon? up and, yeah. and, and yeah. hypnotizes us to tell us to forget everything we've just yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. There's a scene that you should really watch if you are short of time because it will actually come true. Right? <laughs> ah, of course, yeah. So just always watch that. <laughs> watch scene. the last little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it now what you're saying. Very clever. <laughs> Makes sense now, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the question I ask at the end of 
every episode. Can you sell this film for me in about 30 seconds? I definitely can try. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, if you like Monty Pythons, if you like absurd scenes, if you like humor that is beyond normal, it's paranormal, basically. And if you are into vampires and witches and werewolves, then definitely you should go and see how they really, really live in a real documentary based on the people, oh, undead people actually, mm. living in the Wellington area because they are fighting with much more problems than just looking for the blood. That's nice. Really? like that. Well done. See, I'm going to go watch it again. Yeah. And obviously, they wouldn't have to go far to see that. Where, where could they see that? That film, Euro. It's anywhere be easy for them to get it. It's very easy to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Filmsy, download Filmsy to your smart TVs on the website or to the phones. And uh, it's straight there. Look for the, what we do in the shadows in the application. No login, nothing. It's just free. Just go and watch it. Awesome. And I'm sure we'll, we'll stick the, the link to Filmsy in well, wherever yes. this is. Wherever, you, wherever you're listening to this on, there'll be a link. If you look down, there'll be a link to Filmsy on there, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's about it then. Is there anything else you want to tell us about Filmsy or about yourself before we kind of call it a day? Or are we... Oh, well, firstly, thank you a lot for inviting me and having me here. And pleasure. second, uh, guys, if you are really movie fans, <clears throat> really, let's support the independent movie makers because Filmsy is giving a lot of a lot of space to independent movie makers and even if they are refused or it's difficult for them to get into the you no know, top one two three streaming services we are offering them free space worldwide where they can be found where they can be discovered and so spread the word and by watching filmsy you are supporting the independent movie makers so yeah, let's let's watch filmsy I think that's brilliant. And we've had a lot, I've got a lot of friends who make films and, and some of them have been on as guests as well. And, and things like Filmsy, you know, just within the UK are just really, really important. It's platform, platforms for where filmmakers can get their films to an audience. It's, it's yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. I mean, we, we talk yeah. a lot of, to a lot of them and it's really difficult for them to, you know, to even show what they created. You know? mm. Yeah. If you don't fit the algorithm somewhere, you are mm. invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of good content awesome. on there. Yeah, it's definitely well worth a look out. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your time this morning. Yeah, Europe. thank you so much. Really pleased to watch that really, film again. I love yeah. it. We really loved it. Thank you for reintroducing me to what we do in the shadows. I might go off and try the TV series again. I'm not sure. I might give it a try. Okay, I can give it a second chance. Yeah, <laughs> let's all do that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, thank thanks you very much. much. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 I don't know if I feel up to it, really. You don't look that great, but if you eat someone on the way I'm and rejuvenate just... a little bit... You could probably wear a mask or something. Just leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. What are you bidding on? I'm bidding on the table. Thank you, Euro. That was good to talk to you about what we do in the shadows. I think that's it for this week, so it's just to give us the normal contact information. So if you want to get in touch with us here at the podcast, I honestly think the best way is by email. And that is my favourite film, podcast at gmail.com. I disagree. I think the best way is via Twitter, which is at my favourite film. Oh, well, if you're going to be like that, I think Instagram is awesome. And that's at my favourite film podcast. Well, I'm old school and I still go with the old Facebook, in which case search my favourite film. Or if you're really old school, maybe go for the website, www.myfavouritefilm.com. If you're feeling really new school, then you can go to your podcast player of choice, like Spotify, and you can leave us a five-star rating, and that would help us get found on all those wonderful algorithms and things. Definitely. Algorithms and things? Or Definitely. over to Apple Podcasts or Good Pods, where you can leave five-star ratings and reviews as well. Next week, then, Ooh. we've got a comedian talking about a musical. Ria Lena joined us to talk about Hello, oh, Dolly. Yeah. She's a fantastic comedian and a brilliant film, Hello, Dolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here is Ria's trail for Hello Dolly. Okay. If you want a feel-good number that goes well with ice cream, watch Hello Dolly. If you want a musical feel-good number that goes well with ice cream, watch Hello Dolly. It's only two and a half hours. That is a big tub of ice cream. That's, you know, you know, I ate, that's popcorn. 
that's some chocolate chips in there. You just, you go nuts. It's two and a half hours. And I think that's it for this week. So from me, until then, bye-bye. And from me, uh, goodbye too. Bye. Finally, thanks to Acast for hosting the website and to Max Smith for the theme tune composition. To get in touch with the podcast, remember that website is www.myfavoritefilm.com. Thank you.